I've seen a lot of change, been through a lot of pain. Some things are not the same as they were a year ago. Hey y'all, and welcome to my channel. Welcome to another week of Aventura the Bus and a new chapter of Aventura. She nailed it. So there's days and times that we, uh, I'm sure most of you have been up on Pinterest before and you've seen like little things on Pinterest and you go, oh, I'm gonna do that. And then it doesn't quite come back the way you expected it to. And there's a lot of jokes out there about nailed it uh, that says you just kind of missed the mark a little bit. But I wanna say to you today that we truly nailed it on this one. So uh, we did the ceiling uh, of the bus and I, I showed you a couple weeks ago how I had a concept that I wanted to do a slatted, slotted ceiling and that's exactly what we did this past week. We, uh, we haven't done the main part of the bus but I'm talking about the cab. The cab of the bus is done as far as the ceiling is concerned. We just have to put some uh, finish on it and then once that finish is on it, it'll be all done and it'll be in good shape. So I just wanted to say thank you for coming by my channel and checking out Nailed It. So uh, I want to do say this, uh, Thomas Edison, he, he invented the light bulb and the light bulb and electricity changed the way that we do life. And he tried a lot of times to get that right. As a matter of fact, I don't remember how many times exactly it took him to get the light bulb right, but it's like, if he had quit on the time just before he figured it out, we wouldn't have the electricity like we did today. Maybe Tesla would have come up with it instead. Uh, but Edison beat us to the punch and it was because of his persistence and his willingness to not give up on something that kept him going. So that's what we've done with Aventura. We continue to consistently not give up on the things that we're trying to do. And sometimes we, we don't get to move as fast as we want to because of budgets or whatnot. Um, we've got some cool things coming up for the bus soon. Mom's coming by tomorrow to help me out with the bus and that's going to be in a couple of weeks from now that you'll get to see her but hey we're moving along and we're making progress and we're actually starting to get to the place where we're going to start building things on the inside and we're going to start building cabinets we're going to start building beds we're going to start laying out the floor plan and uh, I have a pretty good idea and concept of what I want to do I have some really cool ideas that I want to incorporate in the bus but don't give up on that one time. You know, when you're trying to do something and you don't feel like you're getting through, just keep going. Persistence, like that little engine that could. Don't give up and keep trying. And sooner or later, you'll nail it too. So thanks for jo joining me for this chapter. Enjoy it. And I'll check you out at the end. All right. So what you see me doing here is I've already put up part of the ceiling background. This is just the background for the ceiling. I'm trying to size up some pieces. This is kind of the super fast forward version of it. And then I'll walk you through the steps of it in the next part. But this is like the fast forward version of what you're about ready to see in the next section here. So what I did with these pieces is I did take them and I cut them down to the right size. And then once I had them cut to the right size, I painted them black on one side. And then, of course, before I actually cut them down, I, I came through and did cardboard uh, sections for these pieces. The bigger pieces I did not use cardboard sections on because I didn't need, they were more squared and they didn't need to have any super fancy cuts. So these pieces here, this one and the next one that you'll see me putting a cardboard uh, template for, whenever I have a particularly difficult cut, I will cut out a uh, cardboard template and I use that really super cheap uh, foil tape that I have to tape it together because it works really good for the templates. And here I'm adjusting and cutting the, the um, piece of cardboard and I'm going back and refitting it to make sure it's the right size and trimming out any pieces that I need to trim out before I actually cut the wood. And so you see me sizing that properly and making sure it's all taped together and the right fit and then this is after I've cut the wood from my template and I'm actually marking some adjustments on it and then I'll go and make a trim to that and bring it back and refit it and so that's what you see me doing there and uh, very soon I will have that all done and complete I was making an adjustment on the side cabinet there and um, I have, I think, actually two small pieces that I had to fit in there. 
I had one small piece that fit in right by the cabinet there, and then I had another bigger piece that sits, um, fit in in the next section. Um, and that's the way it worked best. And I'm renailing a, a section of trim there, and I'm taking that down now because I realized I didn't have my wire management in place and I wanted to manage my wires properly. So I took it down long enough to fix the wire management. So that's what you see me working on right there is I was I'm making adjustments to the wire management and putting it to where my wires were managed properly. And um, I basically found these tie wraps that have holes in them and that makes the best um, things that I can to put my wires through there. And it has worked very, very, very good for me. And then I actually reattached the, the um, piece of the ceiling there. So this is basically the background. What you will see later is you'll see that I took the, the places where the joints came together and I got gaffer's tape to cover the, the joints of that. Now gaffer's tape is kind of a low tack tape, but it's um, got material on it, so it, it, it's very flexible. So that's why I used that to, to cover the joints because one, it's a very flat black color and two, it, it's got just enough tack on it to make it stick and then it has um, the material there that's flexible for all the vibrations and stuff that we'll have from the bus. So I found that to be the best solution for that problem. And um, there you see me fitting in the last couple pieces of the wood. And I'm sorry for the camera, or I apologize for my camera angle that it's not perfect, but um, I was trying to cover it from two different spaces there. So now you see me move this and there's um, putting gaffer's tape on and adjusting the lights and the ceiling to get it ready for the next step, which is to put up the um, boards and you'll see this kind of go in fast motion and then I'll explain to you the steps that I did to get this done and um, it was a really good process and the the what I did is I just cut out the first few pieces to start out with I wanted to make sure that I got the first board in the center and tried to line it up as close to the center as possible so that I, when I start the cabin in the back, I can have another uh, way to uh, reference and get the ceilings matched up both in the front and the back. So um, wasn't a hard process. I bought the pine boards that are basically three inches um, wide, but they have a tongue and groove on each side. So what I did is I cut the tongue and, tongue and groove off each board um, so I did that on the table saw and there you see me just tacking it up with some with the my brad nailer Which I did not like the way that was working. So I ended up coming back and doing the drill gun and I had already built a whole grid in there So I had the boards up in the ceiling that would support this system. So uh, That's basically what I did. I just drilled into the boards that were already up there and this really became a quite smooth process and it went quite quickly um, on the black background for the ceiling I used uh, black drywall screws to mount those and then these ones I used uh, these yellow colored uh, screws it's not going to be covered up but it's okay I'm okay with that and this is going to be the close-up view you can see the gaffers tape that I used to tape and here I'm measuring to cut my first board here but you can see that I put the gaffer's tape on the cracks there and it makes a nice good seal for that and and I have my puck light cut out right there and basically I'm just sizing up the first board and then I come in with the uh, remaining boards and kind of you know get it to where I have it exactly on center and then what I did to space the boards out I didn't use a gauge or anything like that I used my finger my, my index finger on my right hand was my gauge for the space between the boards and it's not going to change because my finger is the same size every time. So I just decided to use my finger for that. Um, I wasn't being super exact, but I, I felt it was a, a, the artist in me said, it's good enough. My finger's good enough and that's going to be my spacer. So I spaced it on one side 
and then I'd space it on the other side and I just came along. Now at this point you're going to see me, um, I think I'm going to start sizing it up for the, uh, yeah, I'm cutting out the, si uh, the edge for the puck light and then I'm going to cut that and then um, first I'm going to put the boards up so that I have them all spaced out properly and that way I will get an exact cut on my um, puck light hole. If I just did it, winged it, that would not have come out completely right. So what I did is go, I went ahead and just put those boards up and got them in place and spaced them. And then that way I had a more accurate measurement on my puck light hole. So that's what you see me doing here. And um, it was really a pretty simple process. Uh, I think I put in two screws per board um, just to keep it up nice. And these boards are flexible enough that I didn't have to worry about putting in any kind of uh, grooves on the back of the boards because this is not a super long or super hard curve. So I was able to get them to bend easily to fit the space. So I didn't have to worry about that. And you can see I already cut the uh, puck light hole out on the one side there. And I'm about ready to put that board in place. So that's what you see me doing now. And then I'll take the other boards, um, put it in place, and then I will mark it for the puck hole. And then I will go out and cut that. And there you go. Look, it, it's already cut that quickly. How the beauty of editing works. Uh, I got it cut and then brought it back in and put it back up again. So there is my puck light and it's all cut and spaced. And we just tuck it up in the wall like that. And boom, Bob's your uncle. It's done. So that's how difficult the process was. And it worked out really, really good. And um, like I said, I would take each of the boards, cut them to size and, well, actually I'd cut the uh, tongue and groove off and then I would measure the boards and cut them out to size and then bring them in and um, just uh, mount them to the ceiling. And this process actually took me all day, one day. Um, it was not a fast process, but it, it got done. and. It was super satisfying at the end to get this all done because um, to have an idea and then to bring it into the actual concept is so rewarding and um, that's what I I did with this project. I had a, a, an idea and I said, okay, this is how I'm going to put the components together. This is how I'm going to make it work and it worked out super good. And so right there you see me cutting a notch out for the actual wall that's there because that one I had to notch in place because there was a wall there and it didn't quite learn line up perfectly and so there I'm basically notching it out and kind of tapping it in place to get it in the right spacing and then I'll mount that board up and um, I will go on to cutting the section for the next puck, puck light that's there and that's what I end up doing on that one and uh, the shorter boards were easier because um, where I had the wall there, I had nice square cut and there was shorter distance to cover. So I'd basically bring the wood in, mark it, take it out, cut it, bring in the next piece, you know. So that's kind of how it went. And then, I, you know, if it had the puck light in it, I would cut the hole for the puck light. So this really, um, once I got a rhythm going, it was... Um, it went really well and um, I didn't have any struggles and we just did one board at a time and near the end I, I got down to the place where I was doing the um, small boards over by the other edge and I had a couple of boards that had a kind of unique color to them so I put those on the outer edges and I really liked the way that came out. Um, it looks really kind of tight to me. Uh, I didn't want to have those colored boards in the middle section, but uh, they came out with a nice kind of finish for the edge when I did those. So, so here I am finishing up um, mounting those boards. And you'll see me go into the next couple boards here. And I'll 
cut the puck light in there for the second puck light. And then we will be Bob's your uncle again. So um, I was talking earlier in the chapter about Thomas Edison and how we wouldn't have the things we have if, if he had just given up on the first couple times he tried something and um, thankfully he did not give up and he persevered and that's what we're doing with this bus we're just persevering and um, I just take everything one day at a time um, I've had a few delays on my project lately because of uh, budget reasons um, I'm trying to do this this bus um, debt free and uh, that's my goal is to do this as debt free as possible and I've done that pretty successful lately. I actually uh, just got one of the first appliances for the bus and I'm super excited to tell you all about that when I get it um, and I got an excellent deal on it. Uh, I really want to thank the Lord for his guidance and guiding me to the right place at the right time and getting the right price for that item and um, it's gonna look really super awesome in the bus and uh, God just keeps providing me with just the things I need at the right timing and here you're gonna see me do that that same section there that I'm gonna finish it up and you're gonna see a little bit more detail in it because I changed the camera angle so um, that will be helpful and um, you'll see me adjust those um, pieces there and um, fit them in and then adjust them and cut the hole for the puck light. So um, that's going to be very helpful in this section. And it's a it's a much better cam camera angle before, and you can actually see how good those uh, sections look now that uh, this is a closer up look, and it gets you a better viewpoint of how this whole thing came together and how it looks in the. Um, whole layout and man it's just super satisfying to get this job done and have it look as good as it did. Um, I'll throw in some pictures here at the end so you can see what they look like too. So okay so I'm finishing up here and then I'm going to show you this is the aftermath of all the tongue and groove getting cut off uh, from those boards. I use the table saw to do that. And then this is basically the interior as you see it now um, with the lights off. And then I'll give you another view with the lights. Or the this is looking from the back of the bus to the front of the bus. So this is kind of the front as you walk from the back of the bus into the front of the bus. And now you will see with the lights on in the daytime. And then I'll do another uh, pan of the lights on at nighttime so it has a nice warm glow at night and it looks really pretty really happy with the result and you can see those boards that I added on hey y'all thanks for sticking around to the end of this chapter now you get to see what the end result looks like and it's a good result I'm really really happy with the product that it came out to be super happy with the results and can't be complaining one bit the lights work the ceiling looks great all we got to do is figure out the finish right now and i'm trying to figure out if i'm going to be painting cabinets or leaving them as wood finish on the front or whatnot i don't know uh, i do know i'm going to leave the ceiling that that natural wood look and i'm going to probably just uh i'm i'm trying to decide between a urethane coating or just a waterproofing uh probably going to go ahead and put a urethane coating on it and that's what i'm going to go with because that's what i'm used to working with but not sure uh, we have a few more things to do to finish out the front of this cabin, but I feel I've done enough on the front to where I can start moving on to the back and, and doing some things back there in the back. And there's so much more to come in the next couple weeks. Uh, thank you for being willing to stick with me all the way through to the end of this chapter. I ask that you would like, subscribe, and share this channel with people that you know or think might benefit from it or if you haven't subscribed yet please consider subscribing to this channel if you're learning something from me i'm really really grateful so thank you all for coming by and y'all come back now you never know what's next thank you all for taking time to stop by don't forget to subscribe and share y'all come back now 
Some things are not the same as they were a year ago.